Okay guys, here's a video um, on page two of the unit four review packet. So the segments um, are parallel to segment AC. Well, AC is this one highlighted here. The only segment that even looks like it could be parallel is DF. Everything else is gonna intersect, but DF is going in the same direction. But we need to have a reason for why it's gonna be parallel. So D is the midpoint of this side, and it's marked by this. F is the midpoint of this side. That means that DF is a mid-segment, and our uh, triangle mid-segment theorem tells us that a mid-segment will parallel to its base. So um, these will be parallel. So DF is parallel, sorry, segment DF is parallel to segment AC. There's no more that it will be parallel to. Okay, number 15 says solve for x. Well, here's x, or um, x is here and here. Um, well, this thing here is gonna be the midpoint. This is the midpoint of this side. That means this thing here is a mid-segment. And we know that a mid-segment is half of its base. So we could say that the mid-segment here is half of this. Well, here's the thing. We can solve it like this, but this is gonna get a little messy with half of x. Um, so another way you can think about it is that the base is the same thing as two mid-segments. Double the mid-segment, I'll get the base. So the base is x plus nine. The mid-segment is two x. Now I have x plus nine equals four x. If I subtract the x over, I get nine equals three x. So that means that's going to be three. So there's two different ways you could solve it. I recommend doing it this bottom way, but there you go. Okay, number 16. What are the three pairs of parallel segments in DEF? Well, remember, a, a mid-segment is always going to be parallel to its base. This is going to be the midpoint of this side, because since the three are tick marks here and here, I mean that this is the same as this, so that's the midpoint. M is the midpoint of this side. N is the midpoint of this side. So these are three mid-segments. MO, segment MO, is going to be parallel to segment FE. Here's segment ON. ON is a mid-segment. It's going to be parallel to this base, DF. And then MN, segment N, is going to be parallel to this base, DE. So segment DE. Okay, number 17. What is the distance across the river? Now, we made a mistake when we did this problem. You can tell that this side is going to be the same as this side, so this is a midpoint. But we didn't give you any information to tell you that this is the midpoint of this side, and we need to have told you that. So I'm going to tell you right now that this was supposed to be the same as this. Now, normally you can't add markings just because something looks like something or you feel like it, but I'm telling you, you need this to solve the problem. So I'm adding that in for you. This is going to be this, this because they're both 55. This thing here represents the distance across the I'm going to call that x, and we know that a mid-segment is half of its base. So segment is the same as half of its base. Well, the base is 92, so the distance across the river is going to be 46. Okay, let's keep going. 18, it says in triangle R, S, T, G, H, and K are midpoints. So G is the midpoint of this side, H is the midpoint of this side, K is the midpoint. That means these are gonna be mid-segments. They also told us that RS has a length of 28, that GH has a length of 20, <coughs> and RH is a length of 22. So just from here, here is 22. What are the length of KH? Well, KH is here and here. That's one of our mid-segments. We know a mid-segment half the length of its base, so the side it's parallel to. So if this is 28, this will be 14. ST is this whole bottom part here. Well, that's going to be double what the is, or this you could think of as being half of this. That means ST has to be 40. And then we have GA. Well, GK is this mid-segment right here. It's going to be half of this. Well, we only know that RH is 22, but since this has two tick marks and this has two tick marks, this must be 22 as well. That means this whole thing is 44, and half of 44 is 22. So GK is going to be 22. Okay. Number nine says, circle all groups of sides that could form a triangle. Well, remember, in order to form a triangle, the two smaller sides have to be larger than the, um, than the third longest side. So um, two smallest have to be bigger than the largest. So, so the smallest are two and six bigger than the largest. Well, nope, eight's not bigger than eight, so no good. Three and four are the smallest. Is that bigger than the largest four? Seven is bigger than four? Yep. Okay. And five. Are one and five and seven? Nope. 
2 and 2 are the smallest. Are they bigger than 2? Yep, 4 is bigger than 2. The smallest here are 5 and 12. Are 5 and 12 together bigger than 13? Yep, 17 is bigger than 13. So these three here can form, um, those three numbers, they could be the side lengths of a triangle. Okay, number 20. Which of the following cannot be the side lengths of a triangle? So we're looking for the one that does not work. Well, for A, we've got 1 plus 6. Is 1 plus bi 6 bigger than 7? Well, no, it's not. So it looks like that's going to be our answer, but we need to check the rest. Okay, the two smallest are 2 and 6. 8 is bigger than 7. 3 and 3 together are bigger than 3. <coughs> Sorry, guys. And 3 and 4 are bigger than 6. 7 is bigger than 6. So, yeah, that's the only one that doesn't work. Okay, we're going to just do it a couple more times, but we're just going to make sure we show our work. That's all we mean here by justify each response. So the two smaller one are 6 plus 8. We want to see if 6 and 8 together are bigger than 13. Well, yep, 14 is bigger than 13, so yes, this can be a triangle. Okay, here we've got our two smaller ones. We want to see if they're bigger than 12. Well, 12 is not bigger than 12, so no, this cannot be a triangle. Okay, the two smaller ones are 5 and 4. Are they bigger than 10? Well, nope, 9 is not bigger than 10. No go. So remember, for these problems here, we're taking the two small. We want to make sure they're bigger than the longest. Okay, I'm going to...